Exhorting him by, by praising him, by seeking that his will will be done, by calling upon his kingdom to reign upon us. And then we also finish by uh, praising him uh, uh, that for you as is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. And we talked about forgiveness a bit. And now I want us to get to verse 16. Uh, verse 16 talks about fasting. And the Bible says, moreover, when you fast, do not be like the hypocrites who you, with a sad countenance, for they disfigure their faces that they may appear to men to be fasting. Assuredly, I say to you, they have their reward. But you, when you fast, anoint your head and you wash your face so that you do not appear to men to be fasting. But to your father who is in secret, in the, in the secret place, and your father who sees in secret will reward you openly. So, one of the things I'm buying a vizuri, to hili neno ni kwamba, Jesus Christ is addressing a, a, a reality. He is addressing something that actually irikuwa inatendeka wakati ure. Mana nasema ya kwamba, munapo funga, musiwe kama wale wanafiki abao huweka uso mwenye huzuni and sometimes they would um, even of course carrying from the old testament sometimes they would even put ashes on themselves put on sackcloth but jesus is now bringing a, a different um, a, a doctrine or a, would i call it not a different doctrine but really a clarity of what fasting is bwana sifiwe ya kwamba katika muda ule wa zamani Waliamini ya kwamba ninapofunga inabidi ni, ni, ni jinyanyase inabidi ni nitoe nguo zangu nzuri nivae nguo za gunia nijipake majivu nionekane mtu ambaye amehuzunika sana lakini Yesu Kristo hapa analeta dhana ambayo anasema ya kwamba unapofunga kura na kunywa ni, ni, ni kati yako wewe na Mungu wako Bwana sifiwe. And therefore you have no business letting people see and know that you are praying and fasting. And so he is addressing something that was happening. There is no commandment in the Bible both in the Old Testament and in the New Testament about fasting. There is no commandment, but there was that practice in the Old Testament, especially in the day of atonement, ambapo watu wali, you know the the, the um I think what was given in Leviticus is that during that day of atonement, there are certain things that people needed to do. We also see in the Old Testament several times watu wakifunga kura na kunywa kwa sababu ya mambo tofauti tofauti. Tunamuona Esther akimwambia Mordecai enenda uwabie wote wafunge kura na kunywa mpaka wanyama wao na ili tumtafute Mungu. So it was a practice that was there that was acceptable na ilionekana ya kwamba ili 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 kuruhusu kupata nafasi ya kuwa bere zake Bwana. But both in the Old and the New Testament fasting inaonekana ikiwa ni ni ni, ni practice ya ya kukutana na Mungu ya kuwa na nafasi nzuri bere zake Mungu na unajua katika agano la kale maana uh, you know watu waliongozwa na na na, na, na what would i call it sheria mambo yale waliyohitaji kufanya na kwa hivyo lazima uangalie usazame kwa nini watu waliabua wafunge ni ili waondoe attention yao kwa mambo mengine mengi na attention yao iwe kwake Mungu. And that was the essence of prayer and fasting. But with time you find people took it differently. Na kwa hivyo unapata ya kwamba you see even Daniel fasted, we see Nehemiah fasting and so throughout the Bible fasting is a, a, a practice that brings us to that place where we ourselves it's for us not really for God. Bwana sifiwe. You know sometimes we may think it's for God but it's for us not so much for God. It, it is for us kutu, kutupatia nafasi na kutuweka katika environment na katika mawazo ambayo tunaweza kuwa na nafasi nzuri and undivided attention pamoja naye Mungu. But Jesus here is telling them it's not about people seeing you ukua umefaa nguo ya gunia. Sio watu kukuona ukua umejipaka majivu. Ni wewe na Mungu kuzungumza na kuwa na ushirika pamoja. Bwana asifiwe. Na anaposema ni ya kwamba hata ukifunga kula na kunywa na kusiwepo mtu yeyote ambaye amejua umefunga kula na kunywa, Mungu ambaye anaona sirini anaona na atakuja kukuriward. Praise the name of the Lord. Of course telling us that there is a reward for uh, for fasting um, because that's what Jesus is saying that your father who sees in secret will reward you openly. Inamaanisha 
tunapojitoa katika kufunga kura na kunywa then there is a reward before God there is a reward in the presence of God and Jesus is telling us that reward will be given to us openly bwana sifiwe and so it is important and you know um, when i was growing up uh, fasting was treated um, as, 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 as secretive and i don't think this is what christ is saying here bwana sifiwe Kristo hasemi hapa ya kwamba lazima sasa ujifiche. Anasema msiwe kama wale hypocrites ambao hujipaka majivu huonyesha uso wa huzuni ili waonekane wanafunga. Bwana asifiwe. Na kwa hivyo kile anachosema ni ya kwamba unapofunga kura na kunywa unafunga kura na kunywa juu ya uhusiano wako na Mungu lakini si dhabi mtu mwingine akijua you know as, as we were growing up sometimes you felt that if somebody knows nikienda shule maana sometimes we, like most of the times we would fast either on, on, on Fridays na nienda shule nikiwa nimefunga kura na kunywa na for one reason or the other my desk mate ajue ninafunga kura na kunywa nilikuwa nasikia kama nimefanya dhabi because this word was taken again to the extreme that we had to be very secretive sometimes people had to lie wanadanganya ili wa isijulikana wanafunga lakini hawataki kukula. Unajua umeenda mahali umepewa chakula hujui sasa utakataa namna gani maana kufuga ni siri. Siri sana haitaki kujulikana na mtu. Na sasa hapa ni chakula umewe sasa unapata mpaka watu wanadanganya um, kwa sababu wanataka kuweka ile kufunga ikiwa siri kubwa sana. Bwana asifiwe. Sometimes it's not bad. You know if if you go somewhere and you're fasting and especially if they are believers also and they are presenting food before you just tell them I, i cannot have it if they insist tell them i'm fasting it's not wrong bona sifiwe it's not a sin to tell people you are fasting as long as you are not fasting to be seen by them it is the occurrence that has brought up so if if, if you come visiting me and na nikuwekea maposho posho hapo ya meja mahali pale alafu unafunga usije kwa sababu unatakiwa kuiweka ikiwa siri ukafinyika sana niambie tu dugu i'm in fasting sitaweza kukula it's acceptable praise the name of the lord jesus is countering the, the and, and that is the same thing he has been doing before he is countering the attitude of you want to be seen by people so you don't have to lie you don't have to tell me nimeshiba hujashiba so it, it's okay you don't have to take it to the extreme and fasting like i have said has a reward and it is good to uh, to fast the bible here says when meaning ya kwamba eh, utafunga bwana asifiwe haisemi if inasema when so wakati huo lazima utakuja in terms of frequency biblia haijaweka katika agano la kale kuna wale walifunga siku moja katika katika wiki lakini kuna wale mafarisayo na wafu, wana, um, walimu wa sheria ambao walifunga siku mbili wakafunga Jumatatu na wakafunga Alhamisi na wakalinga sana kwa sababu ya jambo hilo wakasimama kado kado ya mabarabara wakiomba na unakumbuka Yesu Kristo alipotoa mifano miwili ya uh, uh, yule mfarisayo akiomba na yule anasema yule anaomba akisema nafunga siku mbili kwa mwe, kwa wiki nafanya naf- no it is not it is not something that we can go boasting before God about Fana asifiwe na unajua uhusiano wetu na Kristo is a privilege it's a favor that we have received na kwa hivyo mambo yote tunayoyafanya kwa sababu ya uhusiano huu tulio nao na Kristo are as a result of a privilege about tumepokea kutoka kwa Mungu. Na kwa hivyo sitakiwi kujisikia kama ni kitu cha maana sana ninafanya mradi ninafanya katika relationship ambayo is a relationship of grace. Is a relationship that I don't deserve. Bwana asifiwe. Sitakiwi kuenda bere za Mungu na kusikia kwamba like nafanyanga kitu kikubwa sana kwa sababu ya kuwahubiria. It's a privilege to stand here and to minister the word of God. And it should have for you that God has Mungu amekupatia nafasi hiyo ya kuwa na uhusiano na yeye. Na kwa hivyo hakuna jambo hata moja ambalo unalifanya katika huduma yake Mungu. Ambalo unalifanya katika uhusiano wako na Mungu linatakiwa kufeel ni kama ni kitu kikubwa ambacho naweza kulinga kwa ajili yake. My brothers and my sisters nafasi za kuhudumu na vasa kumfanyia Mungu kasi kazi nafasi ya kuomba kufunga nafasi ya ya, ya, ya ya kuwa katika ibada inatakiwa kuwa japo la kukunyenyekeza eh hey, kiswahili na kuwa ngumu praise the name of the lord 
it should be a very harboring thing. It is it should be harboring that I can come and speak to you today. Praise the name of the Lord. It should be harboring that I you know David David is is it David who is saying uh, who is man that you take cognition of mwana mwanadamu ni nani eh yakoba unamshughulikia yakoba unamsikiza unampatia sikio lako na kwa hivyo wewe kuenda mbele zake Mungu kwa maombi ni jambo ambalo linatakiwa kukunyenyekesha kwa sababu ni privilege kubwa ambayo umepokea kutoka kwa Mungu wewe kupata nafasi ya kufunga kula na kunywa na kutokana na hiyo kufunga kula na kunywa Mungu anasema kwamba he will reward you openly is a great privilege that you have received na sio kitu cha kulinga nacho sio kitu cha kujiinua nacho ni kitu cha kusikia kwamba nimeheshimika ninanyenyekea bere zake Bwana Bwana asifiwe and that is why tunatakiwa kufanya hivyo bila ya, 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 ya you know you know sometimes when i come like when i came on wednesday here and, I, and, and out of almost 100 people who comes to the service i found only five people coming to pray on wednesday many questions go through my heart hmm? I, i was listening to an expositor and he was saying he was asking is grass growing on your path that uh, watu wale wa siku zile walikuwa na mahali pa kuombea na kwa sababu walieda mahali pa kuombea mara nyingi sana wakirudi nyasi ilikauka. Maana wakienda. Na kwa hivyo ukifika kwa, kwa boma ya mtu ukitaka kujua mahali ambapo huwa anaombea unaangalia mahali kuna kajia ambako nyasi imekauka. Sasa wewe nyasi yako ama Praise the name of the Lord. Nyasi yako imekauka. Ya kwamba unaendaga hapo mahali pa maombezi sana you know they would walk on that path on that path until it would the, the grass would dry and so kila wakati mtu alipokuja akaona nyasi na mea alikuwa anauliza kuliedaje how comes kajia ya kwenda mahali pako pa maombezi nyasi na mea sasa wewe katika rohoni waachana na hii nyasi ya huku kajia kako kakwenda katika sehemu yako ya maombi nyasi na mea ama imekauka bwana asifiwe because prayer is is very very important for every believer and trouble katika maisha ya Mkristo huingia tu wakati ambapo tumezembea katika maombi. Ukizembea katika maombi shida na mateso zi, na, 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 na na what are they called temptations zinaingia katika maisha yako. And so let us make prayer and fasting something that we um, we honor and something that we are proved there is a reward for that but let us always remember it's a privilege to be before the Lord from verse 19 ananena juu ya fedha bwana asifiwe anaongea juu ya pesa na anasema do not lay up your self treasures on earth where more than rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal but lay up your self treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroy and where thieves do not break in and steal for where your treasure is there your heart will be also bwana asifiwe ukitaka kujua the th- things that people value in their lives check what things they spend their money on or asifiwe angalia ni wapi ambapo fedha zao nyingi hutumika hapo ndipo utakapojua watu wana 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 value nini wanadhamini nini katika maisha yao kama wanadhamini watoto sana katika maisha yao fedha zao nyingi zinaendaga kwa watoto bwana asifiwe kama wanadhamini um, uh, uh, kuonekana na na umaridadi fedha zao nyingi zinaenda hapo and people have different things you know I, i was i was being surprised you know i was talking to a colleague of mine na akaniambia yeye ni collector wa saa za mkono saa za mkono akaniambia akona sijui aliniambia akona saa kama ni 60 ama ni 100 and i think 120 sijui na ile alikuwa amevaa ni ya 65000 ile alikuwa amevaa kwa mkono ni ya 65000 na kuna zingine za over 100,000, 300,000. Is what is Kwenda tu ananunua saa ya 1300, aionage tu kwa nyumba. What do you value? Praise the name of the Lord. And Jesus knew that these guys will spend money in the things that they have, they value. The other who are collectors wana wana collect magari. You know a friend was telling as alitebea nyumbani kwa kwa mtu. Alipofika kwa gate akashidwa guy kwani nimekuja kukua na wageni. Eh yeah, nime akaingia aka akauliza kwani huku niambia kuna wageni na nilikwambia ninakuja akamwambia hakuna wageni kwa nini 
eh hiyo magari yote iko kwa parking ni ya nini? Akasema hapana, mume wangu ni collector wa magari. So kuna Mercedes pale, kuna Volkswagen pale, kuna VX pale, kuna V8 pale, kuna gari kama 10 kwako. Not for any reason, as you know that hapo ana nini? Bwana asifiwe. Wewe unakuwa collector wa nini? <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. You know, and so Jesus is telling them that do not put your treasure in things ambazo zinapita na zinaisha. Bwana asifiwe. Na ni vizuri tujiulize ni vipi ambavyo tunatumia mali ambayo Mungu ametupatia. Na je, tunatumia hiyo mali kwa jia ambayo iko na kitu naitaga itano relevance. Ya kwamba vile ambavyo unatumia fedha ni reason nazo siwe kidogo. Unajua unaweza sema ya kwamba hizo ni za watu walio na mapesa mingi, hao ndio wako na shida hiyo. But nakwambia behaviors zilizo na walio na nyingi hata walio na chache ni the same. Ya kwamba ukiwa na shiriki zako mia moja ama mia bili, what do you put them in? Do you put them in into courses that have eternal relevance? Unatoa mali yako katika eh, mambo ambayo utakapofika mbele zake Mungu utapata malipo kwa sababu yake. And there are very many things here on earth that are vanity of vanities. Of course the Bible says that the love of money is the root cause of all evil. It does not say money is it is just the love of money. When our, 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 our emotions are driven by money. Ya kwamba ninapenda pesa sana ya kwamba nime, nimeishikanisha na, na, na hisia zangu na pesa nimeinua kuliko watu. Bwana asifiwe. Kwa hivyo ni vyema ujiulize fedha zako unazitumia namna gani. Na vile unavyozitumia je zina zina zinaleta ene um, eternal relevance. Of course mimi nikwambia mimi ni collector wa Bibles. Unajua the beauty ya Bibles. Shida nilipo sema hivyo nilipata watu kadhaa wakaniambia ni wanunulie Bibles na ninawanunulia. Bwana asifiwe. Na najua nikiwanunulia hiyo ni hiyo ni hiyo ni hiyo nimeweka biguni. E, huko haiwezi liwa. Praise the name of the Lord. Yes, haiwezi liwa huko so it is a treasure. So where where do you you know where where do you invest things that God has given you? Do you invest in lives of people where the transformation of these people stores for you uh, a reward in heaven? Do, do you do you invest in the kingdom in the work of God? Bwana asifiwe. Na ni vizuri ujiulize unajua wakati mwingine sisi ujitazama na kuona like we don't have enough to God is not demanding more than you 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 you, you have. Mungu haitishi kile ambacho hauna. Lakini hakuna hata mmoja wetu hapa ambaye hana cha kuleta katika ufalme wa Mungu na kujenga ufalme huo. Bwana asifiwe. Na ili tunapoleta katika ufalme wa Mungu um, tuweze kupata kwamba there is a reward na haziwezi kuharibiwa. Of course the other thing that I would think that um, Jesus was talking about is is a pursuit of wealth. Would they call it meaningless pursuit of wealth? That you want to be a billionaire but why? You want to be a millionaire why? Why do you need all this money? Yes you want to build a big house that you cannot even uh, use it all but why? Kwa sababu kuna wakati mwingine na nimeipata sana katika young people ambao wana pursue meaningless wealth. I call it meaningless wealth kwa sababu wana pursue wealth. Wanasema nataka kuwa billionaire. Lakini hakuna sababu ambayo imeegezwa imewekwa hapo na kuwa billionaire hii anataka kuwa billionaire. Bwana asifiwe. Kwa sababu na shida ni wakati ambapo our view of wealth na mali inakuwa twisted. Ya kwamba ninapokuwa na nyumba kubwa, ninapokuwa na gari kubwa, ninapokuwa na fedha nyingi, ninapovaa kiatu cha pesa mingi, ninapovaa nguo za pesa mingi, inanipatia status, ina inanidefine, ina inaadhiri ina, ina my identity. Wakati ambapo tunaanza kutazama mambo hivyo na kwa hivyo ninapoona mtu aliye navyo kuliko vile nilivyo navyo na muona kama ni heri kuliko mimi inakuwa ni shida. Bwana asifiwe. Lakini view yetu ya mali inatakiwa kuwa ni vyombo ambavyo Mungu ametupa kwa sababu ya kutekeleza kazi ambayo ametupatia katika ulimwengu huu. Bwana asifiwe. 
ya kwamba kama nahitajika kutembea hapa na pale hapa na pale in the fulfillment of my purpose then nikipewa gari ni chombo ambacho nimepewa cha ku, cha kufanya hiyo kazi ambayo nime, nimepewa sio kitu ambacho nimepewa ambacho kina define mimi ni nani praise the name of the lord nikimaliza hapa tu kuwanenea itabidi niende bio sana ili by the next 2015 minutes niwe kule house of jericho mara kama nikimaliza hapa igebidi niodoke nichukue baisikeli ama niende pale nigoje matatu iende ikisimama every stage the thing is that sige wanenea katika hii ibada maana igebidi nitoke saa tatu praise the name of the lord lakini Mungu katika mwito alionipa akaona ya kwamba itahitajika niwe na gari la kunipeleka pale. Kwa hivyo mimi kuwa na gari na wewe kutokuwa na gari hainifanyi mimi bora kuliko wewe. Gari lina inakuwa tu ni chombo cha kunifa, kunifacilitate kutimiza makusudi niliyopewa na Mungu. Na wewe pengine kuna kingine ambacho umepewa lakini wakati mwingi huwa tunafungwa macho na zile zimepewa watu wengine na kukosa kuona kile sisi tumepewa na tukikosa kuona kile sisi tumepewa tunashindwa kutimiza makusudi ambayo Mungu ako nayo katika maisha yetu and that is the attitude that ought to be there i always tell you the first time when i bought the first car in 2008 when i didn't even have money that was enough to buy a car is because i was needed to teach bible study in kayore and i was working at wilson airport and god was clear to me that he didn't want me to leave my job and i had to leave the, the work at five. na siku hizo kulikuwa na jam siku hizi hakunaga jam barabara zimetengenezwa so i would get a matatu from wilson airport na shuka nyayo stadium saa hiyo hakukuwa na matatu zilikuwa zinatembea kutoka nyayo stadium kuja city stadium natembea mguu kwa sababu nikienda town saa yote itaishia hapo kabla nifike town so natembea kutoka nyayo natembea mpaka city stadium nikifika city stadium mguu matatu watu wanatembea kugotoga kutu so natembea mpaka sijui makandara wapi nikifika makandara matatu inanipita inaenda inabeba wale niliacha city stadium hiyo mateso nikaambia Mungu hapana huku niita nitesekaga hivi praise the name of the lord nikaambia Mungu i need a car praise the name of the lord to be able to live work go to church and teach bible study in the evening maana sasa hiyo nafika kayore church saa bili usiku na Bible study ilianza saa moja. Nitafundisha. And God answered my prayer through my boss. My boss I, I couldn't buy a car but he bought a car for me and told me where to me gari kwa huduma na kazi utalipa siku ile utaweza. This is how I bought my my first car because it is a tool. It is an instrument to facilitate you to serve God. What as if you It does not give you status. It does not define who you are. The definition of who you are is that he who is in Christ Jesus is a new creation the old has gone and this new that has come is your identity The day uliombewa ukawekewa mikono ukasema nisamee dhabi zangu you attained a new identity nothing can make that identity better nothing can make that identity worse it remains the identity you got power to cry out abba father you are a son of god Praise the name of, of the Lord. What happens over time is clarity. It is not that you get you 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 you, you become an improved son. Unajua kuna kuku improved kuna you don't become an improved son. What happens ni kwamba you 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 gain clarity of who you are in Christ. Unapoelewa siku ile uliokoka ukafanywa mwana wa Mungu that was enough perfect and complete. Praise the name of the Lord. And nothing will make you a better child of God. What happens over time is that you keep getting clarity of what it means to be a son of God. Unaendelea kuwa clear kuwa mwana wa Mungu ni nini. Na unapokuwa clear kuwa mwana wa Mungu ni nini, then you na behave vizuri kama mwana wa Mungu because ignorance inafanyaga watu wa behave sio kama wana wa Mungu. So it is clarity that comes yule mwana mpotefu akiwa ameketi pale akitamani kula chakula cha nguruwe he was still a perfect son of his father nothing in his sonship had been reduced by leaving home praise the name of the lord and that is why when he is coming back and the father sees him anasema yule ni mwana wangu alikuwa amekufa sasa yuhai alikuwa amepotea sasa amepatikana kule kuwa mwana hakukupunguzwa 
kwa sababu ya kuondoka nyumbani na hakukuongezwa kwa sababu ya kurudi nyumbani the only thing that happened is the guy came to his senses there was clarity of who he is and that is what happens for us as believers tunaposoma neno na kulielewa kile kinachofanyika is that we give we keep getting clarity of who we are and our relationship with god and when you get clarity and you know that wealth does not make you does not define you then you can take that wealth and invest it in the things that matter the things that have kingdom and eternal relevance praise the name of the lord you can invest your wealth in the work of the lord without a worry because you know this is relevant to my god verse 22 the lamp of the body is the eye if therefore your eye is good, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eye is bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in you is darkness, how great is that darkness? This has to be tied with what we have been looking at. Na Yesu Kristo amekuwa kidena juu ya mafarisayo abao walikuwa ni, ni, ni hypocrites. Na hypocrisy yao ilitokana na kuelewa kwao kwa mambo na kuelewa kwao kwa vile ambavyo maisha katika you know, religion maana ni there's the understanding of religion and Jesus is using the eye as an example of what illuminates your life na swali analouliza ni je jicho ndio mwangaza wa mwili maana the eye ndio huwa inaona that is the world view. That is the eye is the one that gives you um, uh, how things ought to be done. Na kwa hivyo, for every person, then you have a vision. You have a world view. Kuna vile ambavyo mtazamo wako wa mambo huko. Na swali ni je, ni kipi kinacho inform mtazamo wako wa mambo. Maana hicho, dicho kitakacho fanya. So, uh, like mafarisaya waliamini ya kwamba, Religion ni kuonekana ukifanya mambo yale ambayo practices ambazo unafikiri unatakiwa kufanya. That was the understanding. And so that is what they did. What is your understanding? Because that is what you will do. Praise the name of the Lord. What is you? And understanding is brought about when I see this basket and I look at it, that is when I get to understand it. And that is why I always say the word of God should always be the illumination. It should be our eye. This word should be our eye. It should be the lenses through which we see. Just like the eyes are the lenses through which we see, the word of God should be the lenses through which we see. So he is telling them, if, if, if the world view, if the way you look at things for you is darkness, then uh, that darkness is very, very dark. Praise the name of the Lord. Verse 24 touches on what I have spoken about. No one can serve two masters for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will be loyal to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. And mammon here was um, a god of wealth. Uh, yeah, was a god of wealth. And so for you to be wealthy, it was seen like you have to worship uh, this god of wealth. And the Bible here is clearly telling us, you cannot pursue the issues of the kingdom and pursue wealth you have to choose what as if you were. yeah you have to choose where you have to be but it doesn't mean that you cannot become wealthy those are two different things you can become wealthy without serving becoming a servant of your wealth how do you become a servant of your wealth when your wealth is what decides what you will do kuna watu hawako katika kanisa asubuhi ya leo kwa sababu wana pursue wealth wana as if you were. E hawage funga biashara asubuhi ya leo. Kuna pesa ambazo walifanya mahesabu wakaona. Nikienda kanisa, alafu hii elfu kumi haita ingia. Hapana. That is how you become a servant. When wealth is what determines. Yakoba mungu amesema ukiona your neighbor akona ja, mpecha kura. But now unangalia unafanya mahesabu naona ni kimupa chakura na wealth hii najaribu ku invest kuna praise the name of the lord so it is it is it is you are you are built to accumulate that drives you 
ya kwamba Mungu hata hata uki, ukisikia roho yako ina, ina huzuni kwa sababu ya huyu mtu maybe ni, ni mtoto ambaye hayuko shule ni mtoto ambaye hana kiatu hana nguo ya kuvaa ni jirani ambaye hana chakula na usikia moyoni mwako una mwito una, una msukumo wa kuwa msaada kwake lakini unapotazama unaona nikimsaidia eh, kuna mahali fedha zangu kuna ka investment nilikuwa nafanya ambayo haitakuja vizuri so una choose ku invest kwa sababu ya kujitajirisha badala ya kumsaidia huyu mtu ambaye Mungu amekupatia macho ya kuona ya kwamba ana haja na anahitaji msaada kwa hivyo unapata ya kwamba kile kinachokutawara katika wakati ule ni wealth bwana asifiwe ni wealth umeona watu hata wakinyanganya watoto mayatima mali ambayo wameachiwa na wazazi wao ni kuongozwa na, na, na wealth hiyo ndio kuwa you know they are now serving mammon they are serving money praise the name of the lord ambao hawajali ili biashara yake iendelee haijalishi atakanyanga um, atakanyanga kanyanga watu wangapi ni watu wangapi watateseka wengine ni hata katika um, you know huko kwetu kwa ushago alikuwa anasema wakati mwingine watu wanaweka maji kwa maziwa ili yauze maziwa nyingi kuliko ile aliyokamua ni, ni kuongozwa ni, kutu, ni kuongozwa na wealth ya kwamba anatamani sana fedha na atafanya chochote hata kama kitamwadhiri mtu mwingine vibaya na ili apate fedha bwana asifiwe and, and that is that is that is what jesus is saying so when you come to serve god then the things you pursue mambo yale ambayo unafuatilia yanakuwa tofauti sana and like we shall see in verse 33 ni ya kwamba tafuteni kwanza ufalme wake mungu kwa hivyo si fedha zinazo niongoza kinacho niongoza ni kutafuta yale yanayohusiana na ufalme wake Mungu praise the name of the lord and so it becomes very important you cannot you cannot serve god and, and serve money you cannot pursue the benefits of the kingdom and at the same time pursue the accumulation of wealth the beauty that i have found is that as i pursue the kingdom of god wealth has a way of accumulating where i, I, I am Bwana asifiwe. Na wakati mwingine watu huwa masikini sio kwa sababu hawatii bidii, sio kwa sababu hawatafuti pesa, wanakuwa masikini kwa sababu hawajajua siri ya ufalme ya kutajirika. Siri ya ufalme ya kutajirika ni kutafuta ufalme wa Mungu. Ni kutafuta kutimiza kile ambacho kinaguza moyo wa Mungu. Na unapotafuta kile ambacho kinaguza moyo wa Mungu, nasema hivi vingine vyote atakuongezea. Lakini sisi hukibiza hivi vingine vyote. Kinachofanyika hivi vingine vyote ni, ni kukibia huwa zinakibia. So we spend all our life learning after them. But if you seek the kingdom, kitafuta tu ufalme. Jiulize. Ufalme wa Mungu ungehitaji nifanye nini? Ungehitaji niwe ushirika gani? Ungehitaji ni deal na, na huyu mtoto ambaye ana shida, huyu jirani aliye, oh, Mungu angetamani nifanye nini? So unapofanya hayo mambo there is a way God just makes ways praise the name of the Lord That is the way to get wealthy That is the way to get wealthy Let's go to verse 25 I want us to finish this today Verse 25 to 34 speaks about worry Therefore I say to you do not worry about your life what you will eat or what you will drink Not about your body what you will put on is not life more than food and the body more than clothing let, let me first pause there and say that this is not a call for a don't care attitude the key word here is worry it does not say that do not be concerned it does not say that do not take care of because there are people now again who twist this the key word here is do not worry bwana asifiwe do not worry and worry is 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 anxiety worry is 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 a concern that has turned into stress worry is a fear of an uncertain future bwana asifiwe kwa hivyo hasemi usijipange juu ya kesho Hasemi usijiulize nitavaa nini? Ah, anasema usije ukasubuka. Usije ukawa na hofu. Praise the name of the Lord. So, 
he is talking about anxiety. He is talking about that level of stress that will drive you to a space of insecurity because of the uncertainty of tomorrow. That is a space that I will see Lakini hakuambia kwamba usijishughulishe kwa sababu kuna watu wengine tena wanasoma hapa wanakaa tu ndee. Hawashughuliki juu ya kesho. Bwana asifiwe. Hawa hawajari ya kwamba mwisho wa huu mwezi watoto watafuga shule na Julai wanarudi. Na wanahitaji kulipiwa karo. Wanasema Mungu amesema don't worry about tomorrow. Eh amesema don't worry. Haja sema don't plan. Haja sema don't in fact the Bible says that commit everything you do to the Lord and he will establish your plan. He will make your plans to succeed. Kumaanisha umejipanga. Bwana asifiwe. Na by the way kujipanga ni imani. Kujipanga ni imani. The reason why nitaweka fedha leo za jiana huyu mdogo kwenda university ni kwa sababu niko na imani atafika huko. Praise the name of the Lord. Eh, that is why nitajipanga. Kwa hivyo kuweka insurance ya, ya mtoto akiwa na miaka mitatu ya kumpeleka university miaka uh, uh, 15 ijayo sio kusema sina imani. Hapana Ni kusema ya kwamba imani yangu ni thabiti ya kwamba Mungu atamuhifadhi huyu mtoto na atampatia ushidi na atamuwezesha kupitia levo zake zote na atafika hiyo level. And so I must start keeping a treasure for that day. But I'm not worried about that day. Praise the name of the Lord. I'm not worried that she might not go. I'm not worried that she no. I'm just planning. So there's a difference between worry and planning, preparing yourself and being having genuine concern about your future praise the name of the lord and you must have genuine concern about your future lazima ujiulize maana sasa unaendelea ukizeeka retirement yako utaispend wapi you not worried i'm not worried about my retirement i'm not worried but i'm planning for it bwana sifiwe and so jesus is talking about worry he is talking about that level of anxiety that can bring about depression and he is talking about several things number one he is talking about um, and, and, and the other thing that I've already said as we go through this is that this section of scripture is about God it is not about clothing it is not about food it is not about birds of the air it's not about flowers it's not about Solomon. It is about our God. Wana sifiwe. Ni funzo kuhusiana na mungu wetu. Na vile ambavyo mungu wetu anahusiana na sisi. Na vile ambavyo mungu wetu anawezo wa kutupa, kutujari, kutuinua, kutu, kutushugulikia. Wana sifiwe. Inatupatia vile moyo wa mungu baba yetu ulivyo. Na vile ambavyo kwa sababu ya huo moyo wa Mungu Baba yetu ulivyo tunatakiwa kuwa Praise the name of the Lord. Yes it is talking about how great how caring how loving how concerned our God is. And because our God loves us because our God is concerned about us because our God cares for us then how do we ought to behave at such a time as now when fuel prices are going up? How do we ought to behave at such a time as now when unga, not unga fuels, unga prices are going up? Tunatakiwa kubehave na mnagani. Tunatakiwa kubehave in a way inaonyesha sio about the price, it is about our father. That is what Jesus is telling them. He's telling them it's, it's not about you. He is just using food and clothing as an example. He is using flowers and birds as an example to show the character of the father. And the day you understand the character of the father, you will have peace in this world. Bwana sifiwe. You will have contentment in this world. You will have hope and expectation in this world. Hauta hauta tembea ukiwa na shida katika moyo wako. Sio kwa sababu unga haijapanda. Sio kwa sababu mafuta haijapanda. Sio kwa sababu a ah, ni kwa sababu wewe 
una uhusiano na mmoja ambaye ni zaidi ya kupanda kwa hizo mbei. Praise the name of the Lord. And so this text is about our God. It's about our God. So do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air, for they neither sow nor reap, nor gather in barns. Yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? Which of you by worrying could add one cubit to their stature? The key point here is not even don't worry. The key point here is your father feeds them. What does he feel? Not their father. You are. You can be sure before I feed the children of my neighbor, my children are already well fed. Sinu kweri? What does he feel? Before niyede nilipie karo watoto wa watu wengine, kwanza nilipia watoto wa? That is how all things work. Ama na mnangani, you know today is Father's Day. Nime mpokea tu ujube ujube tu wa Father's Day leo. Wala wame nitumia ni vizuri. Wale hamuja tuma tafadhali mmekishu wame tuma. Wana sifiwe. Ama mimi siyo father. Eee, na mimi ni father wenu na siyo father mbaya. Sifikiri ni mimi mbaya vire. Wana sifiwe. So, hata before ni shugulike kuingine na shugulika ka hapa. Si munaona hata before ni yada house of worship jeli kwa kwanza. Odho hata mimi ni father wawo, lakini mimi ni father wenu kuliko wawo. Na musi wabie. So, he is telling them that look at the birds of the air. But you must realize the birds of the air work hard. Praise the name of the Lord. They work hard. So, it is not a call not to work hard. It is not a call not to gather. It's not a, they work hard. But he is telling them, you are father. He is your father. He is not their father. But your father feeds them. Those birds of the air, which he is their creator, but he is not their father. God is not the father of birds. Because he is a father of only those who believe in Jesus Christ. They are the ones who receive power to become children. So he is not a father of the birds. But he feeds them. So this text is about your father. So when you are in a place of need, when you are in a place of scarcity, unasikia ni hakuna hapa, think about your father. Think about the character of your father. Think about the generosity of your father. Think about the love of your father. Think about the abundant provision of your father. Think about the riches of your father. Bwana sifiwe. Like now, Jeremy aniabia migu yake inakuwa haraka. Kiatu imekuwa dogo. Kiatu ikikuwa dogo, hafikiri juu ya bei ya viatu. Anafikiria juu ya uwezo wa baba yake kumununulia kia. So when you, when you get to a place of scarcity, don't think about the scarcity you are going through. Think about the ability of your father in that place of scarcity. When you get into a battlefield and the fighting is so fierce and you feel like you are losing, don't think about the battle that you are fighting. Think about your father who is and it's our host of hosts. Munenoita. <laughs> what does it feel? Jehovah Munenoa? Yeah, yeah, dear Mkua Maje. Yakoba, Hakuna Vita Vina Mushida. And so, how fikiri juya wewe, unafikiri juya babayako. Praise the name of the Lord. And that is how we ought to be. Like children who have a father. So, this text is about your father. And it is saying that your father feeds them. And he is asking, are you not of more value than they to your father? Kama, kama baba yenu alimtoa mwanawe wa peke, aje afe kwa sababu ya dhabi zenu, na hakutoa mwanawake wa peke afe kwa sababu ya dhabi za dege. Lakiri ya napatia dege chakura. Kwa nini wea kose kukupatia? Wana sifiwe. So my brothers and my sisters, regardless of the things that we go through, Regardless of the, how the economy is, let us rest in the assurance that we have a father. 
tuna baba naye tushughulikia unajua shida wakati mwingi hutupata kwa sababu hatukai nyumbani mwa baba the only reason yule mwana mpotefu alipatwa na shida alipatwa na jaa ni kwa sababu aliondoka katika nyumba ya baba yake bwana asifiwe usikubali chochote kikudoe katika nyumba ya baba yako nyumba ya baba yako wakati mwingine unaposubiri kunaweza onekana kama kuna jaa kidogo lakini nakufahamisha kwamba atakushibisha atakupatia praise the name of the lord so it is about your father it's about your father and hapa anasema ya kwamba which of you by worrying by being anxious by being depressed can add one cubit to your stature Actually worry reduces life. Eh worry ile ile kufadhaika na kusubuka na nini inapunguza. The day you understand the meaning of entering into his rest that Christ came and we entered into his rest. Because when you enter into the rest, rest of the Lord you operate from a place of rest. You don't operate from a place of staggering and It doesn't man, mean you don't do the things you are supposed to do. You do them. We work hard. We look for jobs to do. We do business and we have to do them. But we do them from a place of rest. Bwana asifiwe. We don't do them from a place of struggle. We don't do them from a place of strain. We don't do them from a place of anxiety. We do them from a place of rest. Even the jobs that we take we do we're not worried that we may lose them I I have one time I was having a conversation with um uh Leverett Kangethe I actually think I had hosted him in one of my forums na akasema ya kwamba wakati alijiunga na Danish Refugee Council na alikuwa DA country director na katika country directors wote katika ulimwengu wote ni yeye tu alikuwa mtu mweusi wa DRC whole world so every time they went to Danish uh, to Denmark for a meeting he was the only black man among all the country directors the all the others were white but he was saying he never worried about anything hata akinukiwa hata watu wakiuliza huyu hakuwa na worry kwa sababu alikuwa anajua ni Mungu alimleta hapo na hawezi toka hapo kama Mungu hajasema bwana asifiwe na kwa hivyo wakati mwingine kuna matukio hutukia na tunaanza kufadhaika katika mioyo yetu kwa sababu tunafikiri watu wanaweza kututoa Tunafikiri watu wanaweza kutuleta chini. Tunafikiri watu wanaweza kutu, kutufanyia maisha yetu kuwa magumu. But do you know my brother and my sister you are the only one who can make your life hard. Because when God takes you into a space, you are secure there. Praise the name of the Lord. When God brings me here as your pastor, I know I cannot leave this place unless he says because he's the one who sent me here. My concern is to ask myself what does he want me to do? So if people start arising from there from there and saying pastor Aroe lazima aende afanye nini I should never be bothered with such I should be bothered with doing what God sent me to do I don't need to protect I don't, I don't need to secure my space because I'm not the one who created that space it's God who created it for me Na ukielewa hilo hautatembea ukiwa na shaka hautatembea ukiwa na kufadhaika katika sehemu ambazo Mungu amekuweka kama unajua hiyo kazi ni Mungu alikupea don't worry ni nani anakuinukia siku ile Mungu atahitaji uondoke utaondoka tu na ni yeye atakuwa amehitaji uondoke na ukiondoka uh, Kerith Zerafath uh, kuna nafasi bwana asifiwe kama ni yeye amesema uondoke Kerith ondoka kama hajasema kaa hapo he will sustain you there praise the name of the lord and what is ineffective it is useless doesn't add any value verse 28 so why do you worry about clothing consider the lilies of the field how they grow they neither toil nor spin sasa nakwambia kwamba at least dege wa agani wanafanyaga kazi wanaamkaga mapema maua hayaamkagi maua hayafanyagi kazi yoyote lakini what happens look here it is saying Now if God I told you this is about God if God so clothes the grass of the field which today is and tomorrow is thrown into the oven will he not much more clothe you or you of little faith what I see fewer that 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 
hizo maua zina mambo ma, 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 mawili matatu. Moja hazifanyagi kazi. Hazina bidii. Jambo la pili hazina lifespan. Kuna wakati na sijui hii miaka miwili mitatu ama mpaka maua ilipata covid. Hii miaka miwili mitatu sijaona maua ile nilikuwa naonaga every year. Yakoba there's a season katika hii kanisa letu there's a season in the year ukija kuna kuaga yero yero very beautiful. Wale ambao wamekuja juzi they might not understand what I'm talking about. Every place is beautiful with nice flowers hapa. Sijui zilienda wapi. Eh? La Zilikuwa? Oh mvua dio kidogo. Oh sio covid. <laughs> Tuna blame covid for everything. Yeah, zi, ni maridadi ni then after a few months zote zinaisha. So the second thing is that hizi vitu hazikai hazina u, hazina nafasi kubwa ya kuishi bwana asifiwe. Lakini wewe you are destined for eternity. Praise the name of the Lord. Ya kwamba wewe umeubwa Mungu alikuuba uishi na yeye milele. Kama anashughulikia hii maua ambayo haifanyi kazi na wewe unafanyaga kazi. I hope unafanyaga. Haina u, u, siku nyingi inakauka, inatupwa, inachomwa na wewe amekuuba na ili uwe mshirika wake milele na milele. Sasa, kwa nini akose kukushughulikia? Kwa nini akose kukushughulikia? Unasifiwe. Si, si hata kama unasikia ni kama umesukumwa pumzika katika provision yake pumzika katika kujua ya kwamba ataweza kunipatia maana yeye ni Mungu and it's so it is about God it's about God and what is a reflection of retro faith in us yakoba hatuna imani ambayo inaweza kutu kwa sababu You know, you know, I was um, when I was preparing for the service of hope on uh, Friday. I had something and I posted it that Lide was, and I have had it before. I like reason to Rick Warren, and he was saying that worry is practical atheism. Worry is practical atheism. Yakwamba, and that is why this passage on worry is about God. Yakwamba, when you are worrying. In practice unasema hakuna Mungu. Na sasa hii najua kuna watu wanakuwa worried maana mafuta imepanda na itaendelea kupanda. Na inapopanda kila kitu kingine kinapanda. Bwana asifiwe. Unga imepanda na nakwambia itaendelea kupanda. But one thing that I know is that as long as God is alive na hakufi. I'll always be abundantly provided for. Bwana asifiwe. Because he saved me. Baada ya kuniokoa, akaona hataki niende kwake saa hiyo, anataka nikaekae hapa ili niweze kufanya kazi ambayo amenipatia. Bwana asifiwe. Na kwa sababu ni yeye aliniweka nikaekae hapa, it is business to make sure that I'm well sustained here. If I travel on duty, niki niki travel, I, I travel a lot on duty. Niende Kisumu na nifanye kazi kabla nimalize my boss apige simu aseme ya kwamba kuna kazi ingine huko nataka ukamilishe so sitaki urudi leo nataka ukae siku zingine tatu i will never be worried about those extra days kwa sababu ni yeye amesema nikaeka so atalipa hoteli atalipa chakula atanipatia gari ata provide na atalipa mshahara mwisho wa mwezi sasa kama wanadamu wanafanyaga hivyo. What about our heavenly father? Maana ni yeye amekuweka hapa. Shida ni uwe kile ambacho amekuweka ufanye sio hicho unafanya. Wewe unakibiza fedha, unakibiza wealth, unafanya mambo yako unaji... No. The bottom line seek understand. Ni nini ambacho kimefanya aniruhusu nikae leo an extra day? Tafuta kuelewa Psalm 139 verse 16 that all my days were written in his book before even one was praise the name of the lord so if i'm here for an extra day it was written in his book before even one of my days were and the day those days that were written in his books are over i will not be here but as long as i'm here my trust in him is unshaken 
because I'm fitting in his plan and in his purpose. Bwana asifiwe. Na kwa ndugu na dada usije ukawa na, na hofu katika moyo wako. Usije uka no muulize tu. And that is why I always say let us lead revelation powered lives in every area of our lives. Anataka ufanye biashara gani wakati huu? Maana sasa maisha imepada kuliko vile ilivyokuwa bereni. Anataka ni, ni zarafadhi wapi amefungua? He will always be there to ensure that you have all that you need. And so you should not worry. If you worry, you are becoming an atheist. You are becoming a person who is saying there is no God. Worry. Actually, you worrying and wondering and, and, and I've said it is about worry. It is not about genuine concern about the future. It is anxiety. It is the fear of an uncertain tomorrow that we should not allow ourselves to drift into. Therefore, do not worry saying what shall we eat or what shall we drink or what shall we wear for after all these things the Gentiles seek for you are heavenly father. I mean, take note of that. You are heavenly and, and, and the, the use of the word father here is very deliberate because even here all of us know by expectation, we expect that fathers provide. What I say? Fathers provide, isn't it? If you ask every child, they, they believe fathers provide. And every father should be. So when Jesus talks about father, and the, the Bible reflects as fathers as men who make provision. And that is why every man must provide for their family. Every man and no man should sleep on the bed and ask their family mule da jiki atia ngata kutumia neno baya lakini wacha niwasamehe kwa sababu you know unajua kuna mababu wako hivyo eh sasa na sina kazi mnataka nifanye nini no it ni 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 utafuta chenye utafanya mpaka umake sure wamekula na wamekunywa bwana asifiwe and, and that is why i have a problem when I see children struggling, women struggling to make things available in their, in their, in their families. And that is why even, even when, I have issue, when there are issues of school fees with the child, I never talk to the child about it. I never talk to the mother about it. I talk to the father. And yes, the father is not there. I always say, let the father come. Let the, I want to talk because fathers are supposed to be the ones who are supposed to be and if you are father in this place, Harry, you know, you know, um, I don't like talking about my father because uh, tears flow on my eyes. Because one of the things that my father taught me is that he could do anything for to make sure that we are well provided. And I was, I, as I was praying here, I found myself telling God because today is Father's Day, and I was praying for my father, and I was telling God. Because I know my father ame ame dungwa ame ameenda kufanya kazi kwa mashaba ya watu. Anatoka na huko kwetu anaenda bali na naivasha anaajiriwa dia dereva dia wa kukamua dia wa kukata nepia grass dia wa nini ili mimi nikuwe vile nilivyo siku ya leo. And I learned I learned from my father. And that is why I, 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 for me, providing for my family is my burden. It is my burden 100%. And every man uh, providing for your family, ensuring wakonayo. Bibi akikuletea ni sawa na ni bahati yako na ni baraka yako. Lakini siyo kumulizaga kayona yota agrehe. That is... Ay, ay. Wacha, daota kuyo kilo. Wacha ni marize hii. Mana leo hatu ogei na fathers. Bwana asifiwe. Lakini fathers tafadhali, let us make sure that we make provision for our families. It's okay if, um, because your wife came to be a helpmate. And one way of being a helpmate is, is, is fa facilitating that which you should do. Actually, by that what the Bible is saying is that kazi yote kwa familia inakuwaga ya baba. Because if the wife comes as a helpmate, ata kuosha watoto ni kazi ya baba, the wife comes to help. Initia, iyo ni kazi ya baba, ni kazi ya baba mke anakuja kusaidia. 
kupika na kuosha viombo ni kazi ya baba mke anakuja kusaidia <laughs> baba kifui anasema hapana si ni biblia inasema si your wife is a help meet see the bible says that he created a help meet meet for for him isn't it so alikuwa so kazi ile yote mke anafanyaga ni ya kusaidi kwa sababu mke ni help meet eh yeah, mke ni help meet so ile kazi yote mke anafanyaga ni kusaidia ni yako yote hiyo ndio theology yangu <laughs> Unatakiwa kuamka, uamshe watoto, uwaoshe, uwapikie breakfast, uwapatie, uwavalishe nguo, ubaki ukifua manguo na uende kazi. Lakini mke anakusaidia na umwambiage asante kwa kunisaidia. Kila wakati unaambia your wife help, thank you for being a help me. Asante kwa kunisaidiaga. Hata saa hii asante kwa kunisaidiaga. Sijui nitume wanaume, lakini leo ni fathers <laughs> We should, we should save fathers from the pain. <laughs> I wanted to send fathers to their wives to go and tell them thank you for 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 helping me. Lakini ni ukweli by the way ni ukweli. Ni ni kusaidiwa. Kwa sababu Adam aliubiwa msaidi. Kwa hivyo mke wako ni msaidizi. Hiyo kazi yote ni yako. Anakusaidiaga. So don't see it as a right. Na kwa hivyo hata akibarikiwa na Mungu na apate kazi nzuri. I know even um, uh, friends whose wives earn more money than them. Bado ni kusaidiwa unasaidiwa and you, you should receive that help with grace you should not receive it with bravado and uh, kifua and uh, receive that help with grace praise the name of the lord yes men should receive the help that their women are providing with grace we are talking about worry but yes the father is here your heavenly father knows that you need all these things that is the other thing about our heavenly father he knows Praise the name of the Lord. He's not ignorant about the prices in Kenya. He knows by the way. Unajua wakati mwingine tunadaa kwa maobi ni kama tunaambia Mungu ni kama hakuona memo ikitoka ya kuongeza mafuta. He knows. And he knew it even before the world was created. Na kwa sababu anajua, anajua vile ambavyo atakuwezesha katika hii hali. Kile unachotakiwa kufanya lean on him. Just just trust him. Bwana asifiwe. And I can tell you practically I've seen it work very well. Just trust in him trust in him i know wakati mwingine tunaweza kuingia na even even me sometimes i have drifted into that space of worry but every time i go to drift into that space of worry najikubusha juu ya mungu wangu ambaye ana uwezo wote ana nguvu zote ni mkuu wa majeshi ananipigania katika vita zote na siruhusu vita vyo vyote viniweke hofu siruhusu upungufu wowote uniweke hofu siruhusu mabadiliko yoyote katika maisha yangu yaniweke hofu kwa nini kwa sababu nina baba Bwana asifiwe. Nina baba na huyu baba ana nguvu zote, ana uwezo wote, ana mamlaka yote, anajua yote, hata anajua hicho ambacho hauna kabla ukose. Anajua, anajua. Bwana asifiwe. Hata kama nyumbani saa hii hakuna chakula, mkirudi kula lunch, anajua. Na si kujua peke yake, you know, you know there are fathers ambao wanajua but they hawashughuliki. Anajua na anashughulika. Bwana asifiwe. He is working behind the scenes. And so just 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 rest. Just rest in that knowledge ya kwamba anafahamu na anashughulika na anasema tafuta ufalme wangu kwanza. Jishughulishe na na ya kiufalme. Jiulize ni vipi ambavyo I can add value in the kingdom of God. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Tafuta ufalme utawala wake Mungu na wenye haki kutenda yaliyo uh, haki kutenda yanayohitajika. And all these things shall be added to you. This is a promise. This is not a suggestion. It's a promise. That, and, and you know, it's, it's a promise kama ile inasema ya kwamba that if you delight yourself in the Lord, He will give you the desires of your... Many times we want to hear, He will give you the desires of your heart bila kuangalia if you delight yourself in the Lord. And I know there is a service of hope I talked about delighting. What does it mean to delight yourself in the Lord? Na kwa hivyo unapata kwamba some desires have not been fulfilled in our lives kwa sababu hatuja delight ourselves. Na kwa hivyo tuki tuki delight tuki if, if our joy our fulfillment is derived by our service and our relationship and our devotion to God then what happens the desires of our hearts are aligned to him and we are able to receive from him. Therefore do not worry about tomorrow for tomorrow will worry about its own things sufficient for the day 
is its own trouble. And like I said, the key word here is worry. And the key subject here is your heavenly father. So the, 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 the concern is not that you stay careless about tomorrow. The core is not that you are not bothered about tomorrow. The thing is that do not worry. Do not drift into a space of anxiety. Have genuine concern about tomorrow. Jipange ju ya kesho. Bwana sifiwe. Agaria majira ya livyo, lakini usiwe na anxiety. Yakoba, ninapanga ju ya masomo ya watoto wangu wakiwa high school. Napanga ju ya masomo ya watoto wangu wakiwa university, but I'm not worried about that. Yes, I'm saving for it because that is what the wisdom of God tells me. But I don't have worry. I don't have fear of uncertainty when they go to university. And I'm not doing this because I'm worried. I'm doing this because by the wisdom of God, I feel it's the right thing for me to do. Praise the name of the Lord. I'm not worried about death. And any of us can die any time. But I'm planning for, if I'm not there tomorrow, what will happen to my family? I'm not doing that because I'm worried. I'm doing that because that is what the wisdom of God tells me to do. But I have no uncertainty. I have no fear of if I'm absent tomorrow, what will happen to my family? But by the wisdom of God, unajipanga. So, the, so this call is a call not to worry. It's a call not to be over anxious, not to be over concerned, not to have fear because of the uncertain future. It is a call not to worry. So do you need to plan? Yes, you need to plan. Do you need to work for tomorrow? Yes, you need to work for tomorrow. Do you need to sow today that you may harvest tomorrow? Yes, you need to sow today so that you may harvest tomorrow. Because if you don't sow today, tomorrow you won't harvest. And so, we must not misuse it. Yakoba mimi, mimi nafanyaka, na ya leo tui na nitosha, wae kesho, kesho ni ya mungu, kesho si ya mungu, ni enu na mungu. Na mungu wamekupatia leo kwa sababu, hili ujipage juu ya kesho. Wana asifiwe. God bless you.